Sometimes beginner drivers face a problem – how to get out of a tight parking space and not to hit other cars. We are driving the white car and need to get out of the parking. In this case, do not try to drive straight to the exit. This way you will get to a very disadvantageous position and won't be able to do anything with it. Your further actions would be pointless. You will just find yourself in an awkward situation. However, if you have more free space, you will get out of the parking space easily. There is a trick. Before you turn right, turn your steering wheel to the other side as far as the blue car would let you do. Get as close to it as you can and only after that you may turn your wheel to the right. Chances are you won't get to the exit at once and you will come near the opposite car. And this is perfectly fine, exactly the way it has to be. Then you need to straighten your wheels, go into reverse and move a little bit backwards. Watch the blue car behind you. As a rule, it allows you to make this maneuver since you've just pulled away from it. Then turn your steering wheel towards the exit, but do not drive to the middle of the aisle but closer to its left side. Get close to the left car and then to the curb. Remember that the back of your car can still hit another car. This is why we are trying to get closer to the left car, and you need to watch the black car in the right mirror. You need to see a clearance between your car and the black one. One more thing to discuss. I have noticed one peculiarity. My students often get very surprised with one of my statements. Let me show you. I put a pillar next to the car and really, really close. And then I ask a question. Do you think you will hit this pillar if you move forward? The pillar is on your left. You turn your steering wheel fully to the right. Are you going to hit that pillar? Well, yes, I am, with the back of my car. And then I say, let's try. We put the pillar over here. And what if we put it right here? Поехали. And this way.
Well, yes, I am, with the back of my car. Wherever we put the pillar, here, here, or there, anywhere, you're not going to hit it. That is, if you turn your steering wheel to the side, it means you get away from the pillar and you are not going to hit it anyway. Designers who developed the car smoothed the back of your car. They did it just so it wouldn't hit anything that is on the side of your car while turning. Posts, trees, other cars. The conclusion is that if you are very close to some object, another car, fence, a tree, you just need to turn your steering wheel to the other side and forget about that object. And you don't need to worry about it anymore. But everything that is to the side where you are turning to may pose a threat. However, if you are driving an old car or a lorry, you may hit something with the back of your car. And if you are next to a lorry, be aware that while turning this lorry may hit you. It hasn't got such a feature which modern cars can boast. We parked, but something's wrong. Leave the car, look around. Everything's okay at the back. The gaps are equal on the right and the left. But what about the front? Here the gap is more narrow, and here it is wider. So tempted to move the car with your hands. This situation is quite common. However, it is very easy to solve the problem. When you park, stop 20-30 cm short of your final position. Make an intermediary stop and ask yourself, should I adjust the front of the car, like this? You only need short distance to solve this problem. How as easy as ABC? Turn the steering wheel fully to the side and move 20-30 cm backwards the front of the car will adjust its position. And your car will be parallel to other cars. If you decide to move further, you need to do it with straight steering wheel and straightened wheels. Now we only need to solve the problem with the steering wheel. Which side should you turn it to? All learned drivers get confused, but only in the beginning. You need to think. Point to the direction where you need to go. If you turn the wheel in that direction, the rear of the car will go that way as well. Where are you pointing to? What side are you turning the wheel to? That's where the rear of the car will go while the front of the car lives by different laws. The steering wheel should go to the opposite direction. Where do you want to turn the front of the car? Turn the wheel to the opposite direction. Keep it in mind, 
Where was the finger pointing to? What side did you turn the wheel to? So, the back of the car will go to the same direction, while the front will go to the opposite direction. And vice versa. If you want to turn your front to go to that direction, turn the steering wheel to the opposite direction. But there is another way. Turn the steering wheel to any side. If it becomes worse, turn it to another direction, fully to the side. And you'll see, the problem is solved. This way, learner drivers usually get confused for one or two weeks. Then the hands learn to do it automatically. Test it on learner drivers. Beginner drivers think that bay parking is very difficult. However, one can always find an easy way to solve this problem. We are driving the red car. Start moving. So, where is the place we need to start moving from? We need to drive past another car. It is our reference point. We are going to park to this side of the other car. However, we need to drive past the other side of that car. The back of our car must be at the same level as the side of that car. This is the place where we should turn the steering wheel fully to the side. Reverse and check around the car carefully, since the danger might come from any side. Continue reversing and stop when you are parallel to the other car. Stop. It is a must. Straighten your wheels. The last step is to reverse straight. It is very important that before you start bay parking, you should move along the middle of the passage. The cars to the left and to the right should be at the regular intervals. You can see that we drive past the other car, turn the steering wheel and start moving. Our car is very close to the corner of the grey car. However, we drive until we are parallel to the other cars, straighten the wheels and reverse to the bay. You always follow the same steps wherever you bay park. Our experienced drivers park. Sometimes they have to move backwards and forward several times. It is okay. So your car as well may not come into the necessary bay at once. What should you do in such situations? Let's see what problems can occur.
There are three such problems. The first one is when we are too close to the nearest car. Usually, this happens when we make a mistake and drive past the place where we should start bay parking. Here is the proper spot, and here we are, a little further. As a result, we drive too close to the other car. The second problem is when we are too close to the further car. This happens when we don't reach the proper position. We should be here, but we make a mistake, we haven't reached the spot and start from here. As a result, we drive too close to the further car. And the third issue. We need to move along the middle of the passage, because when we park, we should watch out for the cars, both to our right and to our left. We should move in the middle. Now you can see what we get if we break this rule. We are too close. How can we solve these problems? If you see you are driving in the wrong direction, you should stop and straighten the wheels. So, the first problem is when we are too close to the nearest car. You should stop in advance without approaching the car too closely and straighten the wheels. Continue moving straight backwards. It is important that your rear wheels are on the same line as the corner of the grey car. Then stick to our first plan, that is, we turn the steering wheel fully to the side and move until we are parallel to the grey car. After that, as before, we straighten the wheels and move into the bay. The second issue is when we are too close to the further car. To solve this problem, you should also stop in advance, turn the steering wheel into the straight position and move, this time, forward. Then follow our first plan. Turn the steering wheel fully to the side and move until you are parallel to the other car. Then, as usual, stick to the plan. The third issue is when the nose of our car is too close to another car to the side. Stop, straighten the wheels and move backwards until you see that the car in front of you is no more a threat. Then stop again and follow the plan. Steering wheel fully to the side, move until you are parallel to the other cars. Straighten the wheels and reverse into the bay. We continue learning how to bay park. The first point is to move along the middle of the passage. Watch out for the cars both to the right and to the left. We have chosen the place to park into and the car which is going to be our reference. The rear bumper must be at the same level as the side of the next car. Turn the wheel fully to the side. Reverse until you are parallel to the other car. Stop. Turn the steering wheel into the straight position. Park into the bay. This was a lucky move and we managed to park on the first try.
But what should you do if you have some problems and cannot park so luckily? If you cannot park on the first try, it is not a cause for concern. We can adjust our pathway. In this case, we are too close to the other car. Stop immediately and straighten the wheels. Then move straight backwards. It is important that your rear wheels are on the same line as the corner of the other car. When they are, it is no more dangerous, we are not going to hit the other car. We even get further from that car. Go back to our primary plan. Turn the wheels to the side and move until you are parallel to the other cars. Straighten the wheels and move into the bay. Let's look at the tracks of other cars. It is very important information. This is the trace of the car where we need to park. And this is our reference car. We should drive past it. Past this line. In this case, we make a mistake. We have not approached the line. But this is not a problem. Many experienced drivers do it on purpose. What we need is just a small adjustment. When you approach the other car, stop, straighten the wheels and move forward. Then stick to our first plan. Turn the steering wheel to the side and move until you are parallel to the other cars. Then again stop. Turn the steering wheel into the straight position and reverse into the bay. When bay parking, inexperienced drivers get scared and cannot understand to which side they should turn the steering wheel. The easiest way is to point to the direction where you need to go. The finger will show you where to turn the wheels. Do not think about left or right, because when you turn around, everything will change, and you will never make a mistake when you point. Turn the steering wheel in the direction of your finger and the back of the car will move in the same direction. Let's revise how we parked at the previous lesson. We moved along the middle, passed other cars and stopped, so that our rear bumper was at the same level as the side of the next car. Then we turned the steering wheel and moved backwards. When the cars were parallel to each other, we stopped, straightened the steering wheel and moved into the bay. Let's watch it again, but more closely. Our trajectory. Stop, straighten the wheels, put the reverse gear. Our car has been in each of these positions. Stop again, turn the steering wheel into the straight position and move into the bay. Out of all positions, this intermediate one is the most interesting for us. So why is it interesting? This position, which we first passed and then came back into while turning. The thing is, you can move into this position straight away. 
In other words, you can move along the left car row and while passing the parking bay, turn the steering wheel abruptly to the right and stop. Then turn the steering wheel to the left, put the reverse gear and move into the bay, just like in the previous lesson. First, until you are parallel to the other car, stop, then turn the steering wheel into the straight position and reverse into the bay. And now a few explications. You should move very closely to the left car row. Then carefully move your car front slightly into your sport. When your car corner will be on the same line as the grey car's corner, turn the steering wheel sharply to the right. Then do not forget to stop. By the way, you should stop just when you see the grey car in your left mirror that same car that you've just passed. But there is one requirement. There should be a gap, some free space between your car's side and the grey car. And you should see this gap in your mirror. Then stick to the plan. Turn the steering wheel fully to the left, move until you are parallel to the other cars. Stop, straighten the steering wheel and move into the bay. These last actions are the same as at the previous lesson. Click this field to watch that lesson called Bay Parking Lesson. And one more thing. When you move and look into the mirror, do not forget that there are cars in front as well. You should pay equal attention to the mirror and the front cars. And now let's watch the example with the real car. We'll be parking a Chevrolet. This is our parking spot. We are moving near other cars. Try to drive the front of the car slightly into the bay. When you are level with the corner of the white car, sharply turn the steering wheel fully to the side. Stop when you see the white car in the mirror. But don't forget that there might be other cars in front. Turn the steering wheel fully to the other side and move backwards. Carefully watch both cars, the distant and the neighboring ones. Then stop again when the distance to the right and left cars is equal. It is clearly visible in the mirror. Straighten your wheels. And finally, move into the bay. The car is parked. If you cannot park on the first try, it is not a cause for concern. In our first lesson, we found out that you may adjust your position. When you put the reverse gear, there are three options. The first option is when you perfectly park into your spot on the first try. We've just started this option. The second and the third ones are less fortunate, but this is not a tragedy. So, the second option is when you are going to run into a more distant car, or you are too close to it. The third option is when you are too close to the nearest car. No more variants. You may try to think of one, but it'll be pointless. So, in both unfortunate cases, when you see that you are moving in the wrong direction, you need to stop immediately. Let's study the second option. You are too close to a more distant car. By the way, looking into the mirror in this case is not the best solution. Turn round. When you realize you're going to hit another car, you must stop, straighten your wheels and drive one or two meters away, then stick to our first plan. 
That is, turn your steering wheel fully to the side and move until you are parallel to the other cars. Stop. Turn the steering wheel into the straight position and reverse into the bay. As for the third variant, when you are too close to the nearest car, it is better to look into the mirror, though you may turn round as well. You may even look out of your window. Have it your way. Experienced drivers usually look into the mirror. So, you can see in your mirror that you are too close to the nearer car. Do not do it like that by no means. In a manner of speaking, you hit this car. There must be a gap, some space. The most dangerous moment is when your rear wheel moves near the corner of the other car. If there is a gap in this position, even a small one, it is ok. Then this gap will get bigger. And the other car is not dangerous for you. If you see the gap decreases too much, stop, turn the steering wheel at least half turn, then your car will not turn as much. But if you realize the gap decreases too much, no matter what, then again turn the wheel half turn. If this doesn't help, do it again for the third time. This means your steering wheel is in a straight position and your wheels will also become straight. When the wheels are straight, the gap won't decrease. When wheels are straight, the car moves straight and does not turn or move closer to other cars. And if there is a gap, it will remain. But don't forget that there must be a gap. If you lost it, you need to move back. Drive straight ahead just a little to make a gap. Is there a gap? Straighten your steering wheel. When your wheels pass the corner of the other car, return to our main plan. Turn your steering wheel fully to the side and move until you are parallel to the other cars. Stop. Turn the steering wheel into the straight position and reverse into the bay. One more example. The situation is the same. We need to come round the corner of the other car. The gap is too small. This is why I straightened the wheels right away. When my rear wheels passed the corner of the other car, I returned to our main plan. Turn your steering wheel fully to the side and move until you are parallel to the other cars. Stop. Turn the steering wheel into the straight position and reverse into the bay. Our goal is to park by the side of the road. The question is how would it be easier to do it? Moving backwards or straight ahead? It seems that parking moving straight ahead is not a problem, but it's not as easy as it sounds. If the front of the car is parked at its place, the rear of the car is still on the road. What should we do? Inexperienced drivers try to reposition their car so that it's parked as required. but with no result. They try to do the impossible. They may desperately want to ask for help to reposition the car. But there's no one around and something needs to be done. What shall we do? Ask the driver of the green car to drive away. 
What's next? The goal is to position the back of the car closer to the pavement border and we want to do it quickly. In this case we need to move straight ahead and we decide to drive the car over the pavement border. That's a bad decision. But we solve our issue quite quickly and the rear of the car becomes closer to the pavement border. Then we turn the steering wheel sharply so that the front of the car comes back to the road. And we have parked. To solve the problem we need a distance equal to two car lengths. This is the minimal distance which may be used for forward parking. But don't forget that we drove our front wheels over the pavement border. That is not very nice and is dangerous for the car. Now let's study another option. Without getting front wheels over the pavement border. Turn the steering wheel so that the front of the car gets very close to the pavement border but without overriding it. The back of the car slowly gets to the pavement border. To make the car parallel to the pavement border we need a long distance. To solve the problem we need distance equal to three car lengths. But what if the distance between the cars is smaller? Smaller than two car lengths. For example, one and a half car lengths. Then we can park, but in reverse. First, position your car so that the rear end of your car is at the same level as the other car's back end or so that your mirrors are at the same level. But this only works if the cars have much the same length. The interval between the cars should be about half a meter. Put the reverse gear and turn the wheel fully to the side. Look into the side mirror. You should be able to see the whole car at the back in the mirror and a small gap. Some space. It's the point where you should stop and straighten the wheels. Then move backwards until the corner of the car gets at the same level as the corner of the front car. At this point you should turn the steering wheel fully to the side. Then look at the back car. There are two possible options. We get parallel to the pavement border and we have some space left between the cars. Or we don't have enough space. The car at the back is too close. We cannot get parallel to the pavement border. In this case, we have to turn the steering wheel fully to the other side and move forward. The front of the car is in its place. That's all. See you later. The author of this lesson is Sergei Novakshonov, translated by Ksenia Kogan, Prima Vista Translation Agency.